All right, I'm thrilled to be joined by Grace Lynn, the New York Times bestselling author of numerous children's books, including today's Velshi Band Book Club feature, A Big Mooncake for Little Star. Grace, welcome to the show. Thank you for uh, being with us. I have this, uh, this, this great scarf uh, that, that uh, fans of the book uh, get, which has a little mooncake, uh, a big mooncake and little star uh, on it. So I, I just want to tell you, I'm bringing good uh, big mooncake spirit to this conversation. Thanks for being a member of the uh, a feature of our club. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you for having me, though. I have to admit, I'm kind of surprised to be a member of this club, yes. or at least I'm surprised that this book is what has made me a member of this club. Yes. As are, you know, we have some authors who are not because they understand that their subject matter is, is deliberately provocative and necessary. And there have been others, particularly in the children's book realm, who are surprised because, because really this book was on a list that was determined uh, to be helpful to teachers, right? Hey, if you're looking for diversity, here's a whole bunch of books that you can use and then somebody took that as a reason to to take these books out of the curriculum it was it was like somebody prepared the list of things that you would target there's actually nothing in the book that is target worthy exactly and that's how i feel and i i feel that that's a lot of how a lot of readers feel about this book there's really nothing political about this book except for the fact that the main character is uh asian and not white Let's talk. Let's go back to the beginning. What was your inspiration for writing A Big Mooncake for Little Star? So uh, A Big Mooncake for Little Star was very much inspired by my own daughter and the Moon Festival. Uh, every every year we celebrate the Moon Festival. And when she was younger, uh, she had never had a mooncake before. So I had purchased uh, like two mooncakes because I wasn't, sh wasn't sure if she was going to like them or not. And, uh, and I let her try them and she loved them and she ate them all up. <laughs> and then uh, she was really sad that there was no more. And uh, at the time, she was a toddler she was like three years old and when she realized there was no more she had the dramatics that only a toddler can have and she was like there was no more mooncakes i will never see another mooncake again <laughs> and of course uh to because of my wonderful parenting skills i was like of course you'll see another mooncake and i took out my phone and i started started showing her photos of mooncakes on my phone and she was scrolling through the mooncake photos and she saw one that looked just like the real moon, she said. And when she said that, all of a sudden, the idea for the story came to my head. Uh, the idea of the mooncake being just like the real moon. In the introduction, I quoted something you had said that was so, so important. And you said, books erase bias. They make the uncommon every day. They make the mundane exotic. A book makes all cultures universal. So on one hand, you've got this great book that, uh, that a Chinese-American kid can enjoy and, and, and maybe Asian-American uh, kids more broadly. But, but in fact, there's another message for people who aren't parts of those cultures who can also enjoy because it's a universally enjoyable story. Yes, exactly. I really appreciate your introduction. Uh, but the one thing that I thought that was that I'm glad you're bringing up now is how, yes, these books are so important for those with Asian heritage to be able to see themselves. But it's also really important for those not of Asian heritage to see and to share so that they can see other cultures, that they can see that people that are not white can also be heroes in a book. They have that people who are not white have their own stories because that's the only way that we're going to realize how human we all are. We each have our own story and we need to appreciate each other's story. So it can't be a demand problem because there's lots of Asian Americans. Um, we touched on how severe the lack of representation is for the Asia, Asian community in both uh, book publishing and, and, and writing these types of books. Let's talk about that for a second. How important is it? And you must have heard from people when you wrote the book about how, how big a deal is it for a Chinese American parent to, to have a, a book like this that they can read to their child? It's, it's a very big deal. Um, I have been publishing for over 25 years, and all of, mo all of my books feature Asian American or Asian characters. And I remember when my first book came out in 1999, The Ugly Vegetables, and I remember I would have Asian parents come to my book signings with tears in their eyes saying, I have looked so long for a book like this. I have 
wanted so badly to have a book like this to share with my child. And then also just for me to be able to share with people who are non-Asian, to show them this is what we are. We are not, uh, I think at the time, the only books that sh showed Asian characters were these I guess what we would call classics now, but they always showed like Chinamen with like long right. <laughs> pigtails, you know, they were very much caricatures. And that's not how I see myself. That's not how any of the Asian, of my Asian friends or family see themselves. And so I felt it was very important to have books that show how we see ourselves as and well. The thing, the thing about kids books is that you can center an Asian American child or family in the book without causing any offense to anyone else. So, so this is a book that non-Asian kids, as you mentioned, can enjoy, white children can enjoy without there being any, any, any discomfort, right? You're just seeing someone else centered in a book as opposed to what in this country has been typically white children. Exactly. This, this story is a story that I think anyone can enjoy, any child can enjoy. It's just a really sweet story of a mother and a child, and it's the magic of the phases of the moon. Um, I have not run into any child of any race who has not been able to enjoy it because the child is Asian. So I think that this is a book that um, is very, very strange to have been banned. So, I, look, I hope my kids are not watching it being a weekend morning. They're probably not. Uh, but your parenting skills are better than mine would be, because if, if I were dealing with a kid who kept eating uh, bits of the cake that we baked, I'd say, could you, could you just stop eating the damn cake? <laughs> um, this, your relationship with your daughter is central to a big moon cake for Little Star. There could be an ending where Little Star is scolded for eating the moon cake. And that's true. And uh, if that was the reason why it was banned, maybe I would understand it more. <laughs> but but I'm fairly certain that that is not the reason why the that that the book has been banned. And the, one of the reasons why Little Star is not um, is not scolded is because of the magic of the story. Because every every day we look at the moon, and the moon disappears, and the moon comes back. And so in the end, they make another moon cake. So that's also why it's kind of like a game game that little star and her mother play over and over again and that's what gives us the face of the moon so it's kind of a little bit of a magic story too well let's talk about that the phases of the moon are a primary storyline in this book why include that um, I think because that is something that is universal. And it's, um, I also have this love of, I guess we would call them pourquoi stories, right? Uh, and I think that the moon cake is uh, Asian, is definitely from the Asian heritage. But I think everybody and all kids, I think, are always interested in the universe, the sky. And I think that everyone, all kids are kind of interested in the phase of the moon, how it changes every night. And this kind of tells a story about that, using Asian heritage as kind of an inspiration. So there's no story about the phase of the moon being a moon cake in Asian heritage, not at all. That is something of my own imagination. It's just inspired by my Asian heritage. I, I, um, you, are, you started your career as an illustrator. Uh, so when you come to this many books later, uh, Big Mooncake for Little Star, what do you start with? The images, the story, both? How, how, does, that, how does that come to you? Um, it depends on the book, but usually comes with the story first. Usually it's the story only because as an illustrator, um, we train that way. I went to the Rhode Island School of Design and uh, we trained that way where we wrote, the, we, we had the story and then we drew the pictures. So that's usually how I work. But so every once in a while, I'll have an idea for a, uh, I'll draw a picture and I'll be like, this is what I want to do a book out about. That's actually my newest book um, that's coming out in February. Once Upon a Book was actually done that way. I created created an image for Children's Book Week, and I love the image so much. I was like, I really want to do a book about this. And so I uh, actually, my co-author, Kate Messner, and I worked together to make a story just around the picture. So that was actually very unique. Well, we look forward um, to uh, having you back just to talk about books, not the fact that they're banned. Great to see you, Grace. Thank you very much for being with us. Award-winning author of numerous books, including today's feature, A Big Mooncake for Little Star.